praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Had to rejoin the live stream, folks, for all those joining by live stream. I am very apologetic about that. We've had some, uh, it's nothing here, but I think, uh, I don't know if it's some network congestion or what it is, but uh, we've uh, been having a couple issues last week and today, so uh, sorry about that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
the Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Father. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised and adored. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, help us today in, in worshiping you. You are worthy to receive honor and glory and praise. It all belongs to you, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless God. Want to um, worship the Lord with tithes and offerings right now. Many have already had the opportunity to bring their tithe and offering up here to our offering plate. If you have not as yet, uh, you can do that at this time as the sisters uh, play. And uh, we will worship the Lord in that way at this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. see the king. Amen. I'm glad for that. Hallelujah. He will, he will appear to receive us unto himself. And we'll see the king. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, it, you, you may have seen on our uh, church Facebook page yesterday that we had requested prayer for Jean's great, great niece, and uh, she is still at Blank Children's Hospital, 13-month-old um, baby, and uh, the doctors are saying she's going to need three insulin shots a day, uh, and uh, type 1 diabetes, and uh, you know, we want to pray for that little one. Amen. We want to believe God to touch her, raise her up, heal her. I mean, if you know that the one who created the pancreas originally can heal it. Uh, amen. amen. And, and so we want to, we want to pray and uh, believe God for this little one today. Any other prayer requests that we have? My sister's back in the hospital. Okay. I want to pray for Lori today. Amen. Amen. She's had some struggles, and we want to believe God to touch her. Amen. Yeah, her blood sugar is 220 over 190. Oh. Wow. Ouch. Not good. So we want to believe God for her. Anyone else with a prayer request or a testimony? Amen. Dan? Uh, pray for me. My teenager hurt me. All right. Well, let's believe God for Anne. You know, the enemy has attacked her in, in her body this week in several areas, and uh, we want to believe God for just, just an overhaul. Praise God. Amen. Yes, dear. Our son, Jim, he, uh, him and his family, has had the COVID virus. Mm -hmm. And we've been praying all week for him and his wife and children. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's doing better. He's almost on his way out. Yep. But yep. continue to pray. Amen. Yep. It, uh, COVID-19 uh, hit their house this uh, last week. And uh, both were, well, 
several in the household and, and such were, were diagnosed with being positive and uh, praise God. Uh, but we, uh, we believe the Lord to uh, bring them out on the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone else with a prayer request or testimony before we pray? Yes, sister. Amen. I've been praying for my husband, Kevin. Yes. For quite a while because, you know, as you know, he had developed cancer and then lost his life into the fall. And he's been going in monthly now for these shots. And he just got kind of fed up with having to do all that. Sure. And they're very expensive. So he went to Christian's oncologist for tetanus hanging. And they did some blood work and then did a PET scan. But he says it's no need to take those shots anymore. Praise God. He totally believed that they could change some things. He can't cure it, but he said it will be so under control that he won't even know he has it. Hallelujah. So I praise the Lord. For oh, Amen. Amen. Praise, Amen. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, we've been praying yes. for him for praise some time now. So uh, praise God. Yes. Wow. Hallelujah. Awesome. 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 I like hearing the stories like that and, re and reports like that. That's a that's a good news report. That's what we like to hear. Yes. All right. Anyone else have a prayer need before we pray or a testimony? Yes. Prayer need. Okay. Pray for Kevin. And I'm not going to tell you why. Just, just pray for us. Satan has been attacking. Put that away. And of course, he's going to. And uh, we just plead the blood of Jesus over us. Hallelujah. So, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's uh, let's pray and believe the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are a good God, yes. that you are a merciful God, that you are a wonderful Heavenly Father. Yes. Lord, we lift up this little 13-month-old great-great-niece of Jean. Lord, we just speak to her pancreas in the name of Jesus and all of her little body. Lord, that you would just touch her. We thank you, Lord, that you have begun a good work in that little one's body and that you will continue it. And, that, Lord, that we, we want to believe you. We do believe you for a full turnaround. Lord, we know that you are a, that you, you who created the pancreas, you can remake it. You can touch her little body and make it come into line and make it function as it was designed to. In the name of Jesus, we believe you for it, Father. We thank you for Anne. We thank you, Lord. We just speak to her kidney function in the name of Jesus. Lord, that mountain of, of, of infection, we take authority over it, and we believe you to touch her, Father. We thank you that you've begun a good work in her body and that you will continue it. Lord, we just pray for Jim and Amy and their family, Lord, that, Lord, this COVID-19 virus would go from them and that they would recover rapidly. And, Father, we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord, uh, for, for, for our good testimony about Kevin Anderson. Lord, that we thank you that that you're working in his body. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you for manifestation of healing in his body. And Lord, we just give you praise for it. And we thank you. We roll the care of every situation. We pray for Lori, Lord. We pray for her as she's back in the hospital. Lord, you know, uh, Lord, that you, Lord, that, that, that she uh, knows you, that she loves you, Lord. And, and Lord, we just pray that you would touch her and raise her up. In the yes, name of yes, Jesus. Yes. And Father, we just rejoice for these answers in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you get our little sweetie fixed up with some coloring? Yes, I sure would. All righty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, I've, I've got my my digital Bible here today, but let's hold up our Bibles like we do, and let's make our confession over the Word, and if you're at home, lift your Bible up, and let's say this together, this is the Word of God, the Word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path, I receive the light, I believe the Word of God. Because it, is impossible because it is impossible for God to lie. God. Hallelujah. We believe it. Hey, today we're going to uh, honor our mothers uh, in the word. 
And uh, I, I'm bringing a message today that I'm entitling, Why Honor Our Mothers? Why Honor Our Mothers? And why do we, the question is, and, and, and many ask it, you know, every time that you come to a, a day like this, whether it be this day, whether it be Valentine's Day, whether it be any other day where people get flowers and cards and all of that, people always say, well, you know, why do we do that? Is it just a big commercialized thing? Is it just a way for greeting card companies to make money? Why do we observe Mother's Day? Well, a bit of history. The modern holiday of Mother's Day was first celebrated in 1907 when Anna Jarvis held a memorial to her mother at St. Andrew's Methodist Church in Grafton, West Virginia. Now, St. Andrew's Methodist Church now holds the International Mother's Day Shrine, by the way. Her campaign to make Mother's Day a recognized holiday in the United States began in 1905, the year her mother, Anna, or Anne, rather, Reeves Jarvis, died. Anne Jarvis had been a peace activist who cared for wounded soldiers on both sides of the American Civil War and created Mother's Day work clubs to address public health issues. She and another peace activist and suffragette, Julia Ward Howe, had been urging for the creation of a Mother's Day dedicated to peace. Forty years before it became an official holiday, Ward Howe had made her Mother's Day proclamation in 1870, which called upon mothers of all nationalities to band together to promote the, quote, amicable settlement of international questions the great and general interests of peace, unquote. Anna Jarvis wanted to honor this and set aside a day to honor all mothers because she believed a mother is, quote, the person who has done more for you than anyone in the world, unquote. Praise the Lord. Anna Jarvis, by the way, who came up with the idea of Mother's Day, became very grieved in her later years over the commercialization of Mother's Day. She felt that the greeting card industry and others were cashing in on the day and almost cheapening the significance of the day to honor mothers. Now, while that may be somewhat true, it is good and proper and biblical, by the way, to honor our mothers and fathers, and what better way to do that than have at least one day a year set aside to do just that. Now, some of us are blessed to have our mothers still with us. Others are not, but together we pause in the presence of the Lord to consider what the Bible says about honoring our mothers and honoring our parents. Now, we'll turn to two openings today. First of all, if you would take your Bibles and turn with me to Exodus chapter 20, we're going to notice just one verse there in Exodus chapter 20, and that is the 12th verse. Exodus chapter 20 in verse 12. This, of course, is in the context of what we know as the Ten Commandments, or from a Hebraic perspective, the Ten Words, as they would refer to it. The Ten Commandments are generally understood to be divided into two groups of five. Five of the commandments deal with our relationship with God. Five of them deal with our relationships with one another. The commandment in verse 12 tops the second list and is the first commandment with the promise. Let's read that 12th verse of the 20th chapter of Exodus. And the Bible, of course, says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord God giveth thee. Now, we're going to notice a second text here, and I want you to hold your place, if you would, in Exodus 20, because we're going to come back to it. But I'm going to notice in the second place, Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, we're going to notice those first three verses of Ephesians chapter 6. And the Apostle Paul, of course, is writing by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And he writes, Children, 
Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Verse 3 says that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Now, I'm not going to comment really on what the Apostle Paul said there at this point. We're going to go back to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. And I want to notice three things in this verse of Scripture. Who, or probably more correctly, whom are we to honor? Number two, how are we to honor them? And number three, why are we to honor them? First of all, who or whom are we to honor? Well, that's pretty clear. He says, honor your father and your mother. Now that word honor there, and we'll say more about this later, but it carries with it the idea of adding weight to, adding importance to, and giving proper honor. You know, we are here, we, we, we honor our father and our mother because we are here because of them. <laughs> they gave us life, praise God. They gave us life. We are here because of them, and so right there, by virtue of the fact that they gave us life, well, we give them honor. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Not only that, they have educated us as children. I got to tell you, um, now my, my mom always read to me all the time and instilled in me, and I'm thankful for this, and that is a love for reading. I, uh, I love to read from the time I could read, and, and you see, she instilled that in me, and uh, your parents they, they educate their children. Not only that, they provided our needs and even some of our wants. I, I can think about, you know, my mom, I know, sacrificed a great deal. I didn't understand it until later in life. Sacrificed a great deal so that I could have the things that I wanted and needed. Praise God. And so we give them honor. Amen. Because they provided our needs, even some of our wants. And I have to tell you this. Our parents were the first to love us. Did you, did, did you know that? Your parents were the first to love you. Before anyone else loved you, your parents loved you. Before anyone else loved you, your mother loved you. Praise God. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think about that song that uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote, How Sweet to Hold Our Newborn Baby and feel the pride and joy she gives. You know, and, and I gotta tell you, there's nothing like holding that precious new life in your hands. And, and, and I gotta tell you, there is a, and, and I'm sure every one of you that have had children experience this. When you hold that little one for the first time, and I, I, I experienced this, the enormity, huh? The enormity of your responsibility all of a sudden kind of settles down on you. Amen. Amen. And you kind of come to the point, you should anyway, where you realize that you're going to have to make some decisions in your life, and your life really is never going to be the same again. Uh, because you're no longer just responsible for your life, you're responsible for that life. And God has given you that. Amen. Well, our parents were the first to love us and to a great extent, love us like no one apart from God can. A child is in a mother's heart from the first breath that child takes until the last breath the mother takes. Uh, amen. Amen. That child is in your heart. Amen. I, 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 I can remember standing up in front of my congregation once, and I, and I told him, I said, I take my family very seriously. I said, you can say what you want about me. You can do what you want to me. Just don't touch my family. Praise God. Uh -huh. 
Because, because our families, our children are precious to us, and that child is in a mother's heart from the first breath it takes until the last breath the mother takes. Now, for example, this last week when uh, we got news that uh, our son Jim had tested positive for COVID-19, now, now it, it, it bothered me. It bothered me, and I checked up on him, and I'll continue to do that. They may be watching today, and I, 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 we're praying that you're fully recovered. But I got to tell you, you could tell that touched Joyce Ann's heart, and all of a sudden, man, she went into the mode. You know, she kept, you know, she, she doesn't really text too much, uh, but she kept telling me, you got to text Jim and see how he's doing. You got to text Jim. And, see, and I said, I just texted him five minutes ago. Amen. We'll send him another one. Uh huh? You know, and, and, and that's because, watch this, because he is in her heart and, 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 you know, he's a grown man with a family of his own. But watch this, your, your, your child's in a mother's heart from the first breath that child takes to the last breath, amen, the mother takes. And no matter how many children you have, they're all the same. That's right. It's always the that's same. That's right. Praise the Lord. No matter how many children you have, it's all, all the same. Uh -huh. that's right. They're all in your heart. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Now, while I realize this is not always the case, okay, a godly mother and father are the first ones to tell us about Jesus and the things of God. Amen. Now, I realize that's not always the case. I realize that not every family situation is like Ozzie and Harriet or the Cleavers. All right, I understand that. Amen. I understand, I understand that there is some dysfunction in some homes, but I'm telling you, in the ideal situation, okay, I had a pastor friend of mine tell me one time, I had trouble wrapping my brain around this for a while, but he said, when we stand up in the pulpit, to a great extent, what we do is we preach the ideal. Amen. We give people what to shoot for, huh? Amen. And, and, and I know that, that not every situation is ideal. But in, 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 in a normal situation, a godly mother and father are the first ones to tell us about Jesus and the things of God. Joyce Ann knelt with her mother at a toy box altar, <laughs> made an altar out of a toy box at four years old and received Jesus as Savior and Lord. Amen. Yes. And that's because, and, and, and you say, well, can a four-year-old child know of what, what, that they need to repent and receive Jesus? Yeah, I think you yes. can. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it depends on the amount of light a child has. Now, uh, like our, uh, I'm just thinking about our daughter Amy, when she was about four years old, she was watching a Jimmy Swaggart crusade on television and she prayed with Brother Swaggart to receive Jesus. One day, Emily was watching Ben Kinchlow, the late Ben Kinchlow on the 700 Club. And uh, Ben Kinchlow said, will you pray with me? And I heard Emily say, I'll pray with you. I think she was three, <laughs> like so three or four. <laughs> she and watched him every morning. Watched him every morning. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and pray. see, it's, it's the amount of light they have. But watch this. A godly mother and father are the first ones to tell us about Jesus and the things of God. So they are whom we are to honor. Secondly, how are we to honor them? And I, and I, I went to some sources because I really wanted to dig into this whole concept of the term honor. And so, first of all, this first quote is from the stone edition, the Humash. Now, somebody says, what's the Humash? Well, the Humash is a, is a uh, Hebraic translation and commentary on the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible or the books of Moses, okay? So this is from rabbinic thought, okay? So here it is, quoting, the term honor refers to deeds that raise the status of parents or provide them with comfort, such as giving them food and drink, 
dressing them and escorting them. That was from Rashi, who was a, who was a rabbi, uh, commenting on Leviticus 19.3. And it goes on to say, the honor due to parents is similar to that which the first three commandments render to God. They must acknowledge who their parents are, not do anything that might cause them to be disgraced or degraded, serve them unselfishly, and not for the sake of an, of an inheritance or any other ulterior motive, and not swear in their names. Certainly, anything else that brings them honor is required by this commandment. And that was by Rabbi Ramban. Hallelujah. And again, from the stone edition, the Humash. And then uh, I looked at Tony Evans' Bible commentary, and he says, quote, to honor your parents means to respect and value them. How this is done will depend on a child's stage in life. Young children and teenagers living under their parents' authority are to obey them in all things unless doing so dishonors God. Even Jesus obeyed his parents, Luke 2.51. But adult children, too, who are no longer in their parents' home or under their authority still owe their parents honor. This might show up in the form of spending time with them, praising their merits, and providing physical or financial assistance. And he gives 1 Timothy 5, 8, and 16. Even children whose parents have neglected, abandoned, or abused them are called to honor them spiritually by praying for them and forgiving them, just as God also forgave in Christ. The Apostle Paul says this is the first commandment with a promise, a blessing from God so that you may have a long life in the land. If you honor your father and mother, then God promises his special care in your life. He can bring heavenly realities into your earthly history, unquote. Wow, I like how Dr. Evans says things. Praise the Lord. And then this one was from the Expositor Study Bible. Just a short little quote here. It says, honoring the father and the mother sets the stage for the honoring of God. Amen. Amen. And so, and so, we see that we honor them. We honor them by caring, by loving by praying, by, by respecting, amen, that, that's how, how we honor them, amen, and, uh, and really, in the eyes of God, because see, uh, parents, early on, they represent God to their children, amen, and so the honor of God, uh, the honor of parents, rather, in Hebraic thought is very much connected to the honor of God. Amen. And in fact, that's a problem that, we, that they, the Pharisees had. They, uh, they said, well, you know, rather than honor our parents, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, anything that we would have done to help our parents, we're just going to dedicate that to God and give it to the temple. And, and Jesus rebuked him for that because your honor of parents is very much connected to your honor of God. Amen. Now, lastly, why are we to honor them? Now, the Apostle Paul in our second opening today says and told us that this is the first commandment with promise. And then he tells us what the promise is that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Now let's break that down just a little bit. First of all, he says that it may be well with you. I mean, you know, the Bible says that honoring your father and mother is directly connected to it being going well for you. That's what the Bible says. And that, that word well translates the little Greek word you you and what that little Greek word there means is to fare well, to be well off, or to prosper. He says, you honor your father and mother that it may be well with you. That is that you may fare well, that you may do well, that you may prosper, praise God. Amen. 
The blessing of God on your life journey is largely connected to honor your father and your mother. That's what the Bible says. Amen. He, and, and, and not only that, he says that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Longevity of life is tied to honoring God by giving proper honor to parents. Amen. Praise God. Now, that's what the Bible says. But I got to thinking about this and it was interesting because a lot of times what we do when we take a Bible passage, if we're not careful, we pull it out of its contextual setting, we pull it out of its cultural setting, and we make it mean something other than what it means. Now, I got to thinking about this, and I put this commandment back into the context of the people to whom the commandment was originally given. I put it back into the uh, the culture in which it was originally given. And, and watch, watch this here. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, he says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Well, what I noticed there is that land was from a Hebrew word that meant the soil. The soil. And this is a people who made their living by agriculture, by the soil. And so in a very real sense, he's saying if you want your work blessed, your soil, that which you make your living at, that which is your livelihood, if you want that blessed, you will honor your father and your mother. See, there was a direct correlation between honoring God by honoring father and mother and your work being blessed. But that word, that word, um, that word translated land, the land there, is that Hebrew word aduma, again, which is soil. And I got to thinking about the Abrahamic covenant. See, the Abrahamic covenant, that covenant that God cut with Abraham, it included a people, but it also included a land. He told Abraham, he said, I will give you and your descendants this land. And he laid out the parameters of the land. He says, I will give this land to you and to your descendants. Now, this commandment, honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Uh, this commandment before us was tied to the people being blessed and remaining long on or in the land. In fact, this was fascinating to me. In fact, Israel's failure, now you, you, you'll recall that uh, Israel, now first of all, the northern kingdom was carried into captivity to Assyria, and then several years later, the southern kingdom of Judah was carried away captive into Babylon. They were taken out of the land. They went into diaspora, and then they did that again back in 70 AD, and for some 2,000 years then, were out of the land. Well, I found something interesting here in Ezekiel 22. Ezekiel 22 uh, tells us that failure to keep this commandment to honor your father and mother is listed as one of the reasons for their exile from the land. I, I, I found that amazing. Ezekiel 22, 7 in the Good News Bible reads thusly, none of you in the city honor your parents. You cheat foreigners and take advantage of widows and orphans. And he said, that's one of the reasons you were driven from the land. Well, didn't he say, honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the land? <laughs> Amen. And so their failure to do that caused them to not for a time dwell on the land. God takes his word very seriously. He takes his commandments very seriously. Now, we honor our mothers today, both those with us 
and the memory of those who no longer are. The bottom line is when we give the proper honor and respect to those who have given us life, we give in a great measure honor and respect to God and his word. Now, as we close today, I wanted to share with you a poem jo Joyce Ann wrote back in, according to what it said in her poem book, back in September of 2004. Now, the Lord has, uh, not only with her drawing and painting and, and all of that, gifted her with that artistic ability, he's also gifted her with the ability to write poems. Excuse me just a second. And uh, I know these poems are God-given and uh, very, very good. This is one of them, again, that she wrote back in 2004. It's simply entitled, Mommy Two. Mommy Two. Children gone, a uh, grown and gone with children of their own. A house quiet, the stillness sets in, and you are mostly alone. To hear the laughter of children or a hurt to kiss, again time and memories collide, and most of all, the noise you miss. <laughs> Shadows sway around the corner of birthdays past and gone, and you awake while it is still dark, waiting for the dawn. To wake up all our children from, for school, work, or play, you remember each little voice as though it were yesterday and want to hold them once again or cradle them in your arms to kiss each cheek, prepare them for life, and ask Jesus to keep them from harm. You can't stop being mother. It lingers in your heart. It was your work, though finished now, but when did all this start? Years ago, when I played as a child, as children do, with stuffed toys and dolls to be like my mama and be a mommy too. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, that you have helped us in it. We pray that something that went forth today will be a blessing to your people. And Lord, we just pray that your name was honored and glorified in our midst. And we just give you praise for it and thank you and ask your blessing upon your people. Father, we, we pray a special blessing upon each of our mothers today. We pray that you would bless them with a very special day and, and, and just give them a wonderful day, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we just say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, blessed to be a blessing. And we, pray, and we believe that you are blessed in all that you set your hands to, everything you set your hands to prospers, and that your light so shines before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And you point them to Jesus. Amen. Lord bless you. Greet one another today as you go, and have a blessed day. And happy Mother's Day. Amen. <laughs>